am I going to blow it on the scratch off? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it definitely, when you're living in your, I don't know what you think, plug, when you're living in your, your car or your truck, I mean, that definitely changes your mindset when, when, <laughs> when you got that down to that last $10, that's for sure. Uh, <laughs> what, you spending, what you spending your last $10 on? My last 10, point? man, I've been down, when I, the last ten dollars, well, I went to Waffle House one time. I had ten dollars left, and I was like, you know what? I'm getting a steak of eggs, man. I'm just getting a steak and eggs, and I'll figure it out. What I got. Bo- what bothers me the most about that is not the choice which you made with the ten bucks. Is you can find some steak for ten dollars. That's what scared me. <laughs> what you hit the tail tail? Jeez. Yeah, man, right. man. Waffle House, they got good steak. I'll what never you- know. <laughs> I'll never find out. Oh man! I have to take your word. I'm gonna go to my grave thinking that the Waffle House got good steaks. Man, based everything on, on Waffle House's menu is good. Mm-hmm. There ain't what's what's bad on a what's bad on a Waffle House menu. I'm not buying other than the oatmeal. Bro, you can't buying. you can't mess with that the was, fruit that was or my oatmeal. Two. The meth, the meth, that's yeah. re- the meth residue on. Oh, okay, man. Why you gotta always be hating on Waffle House? Paul? Hey, man, it's it's a, it's a perfect cover up. Waffle you know? House advocate. What do you mean? You know? <laughs> it's the perfect cover up. Um, um, plug. I'm, I'm and, I, and I'm sorry, guys. So today we 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 have guests with us today. We've kind of been um, speaking and conversing and talking about bullshit already, and. I thank them for just taking the time to entertain my bullshit. So to thank them in return, I would like to introduce my guys, uh, Austin King over here, and the fellow in, in the corner that will be joining us is Plug. What's up, Sleepy? Is he sleepy? He got that long nap. I, thought you too, too, I was about to say, I was like, I thought you took that. He got in that REM cycle, and he's trying to wake up, man. Nah, I went fishing the other night, man. Once, once you get that really spinach over there, ready. I ain't really bounced back. It's yet. ready. I just said, <laughs> I haven't haven't casted those magical. Uh... So when you went fishing, like, did you see any ghosts? Hell yeah! Every time you go to Lake Lanier, Lake there's Lanier, a ghost. Haunted like a mom. <laughs> <laughs> Who goes like like I have, I fish and I've never thought about going to Lake Lanier. Oh, well, I mean, there's some nice fish in there. <laughs> Man, yeah. he posted a photo of some green like it's a green orb or something in there. I don't know what it was, man. Yeah, it was. Uh, it looked like somebody had dumped some antifreeze. In it wasn't antifreeze, though. It looked like antifreeze. Well, come to find out, my f- dude I was fishing with was using some little trick bait shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he got some. I look back there, this motherfucker looked like uh, Dexter. He got all this neon green shit on his hands. I'm like, what the fuck? He's like, yeah, my fish die. I'm like, this nigga cheating. No wonder you back here catching fish. You make me up here feeling like I'm a novice fisherman. Because I'm... Just- he had fish. I saw the photo. I was like, "Yeah, man, that's some spirits in that lake." And it turned out to be fish die. But no, that lake is is fucked up. Like I don't see. Like, it was people out there swimming, kayaking, and shit. And I was just like, "How are y'all nah. doing this shit?" I'm on a pontoon, so I'm a little removed from the water. <laughs> you know, we was we was fishing. So nah. When was the first time you saw a ghost at Lake? I ain't never seen nothing. Shit is out there. They are out there. They (laughs) are out there. I mean, it's based on the history. Like, they tell us online that the Corps of Engineers, Armored Corps of Engineers, moved people and paid people to leave, and they excavated cemeteries. They do all that shit. And then, you can't tell me back in that time period, it might have been some Indians or some people. They could have killed them people and took the land and built the lake. You don't know that shit. But that, they didn't find all them cemeteries that was in that town. That's a big town. Like, they didn't get all the cemeteries up. That alone is spooky as shit. Y'all is swimming over dead people. So, was it a... Because every time anybody posts anything about uh, Lake Lanier, it's always... It's the same kind of story. So, it was a, it was a functioning, like, Mayberry-style town. Yeah. And then it just... And they just... How did they dump that much water in it? How do you do that? Um... Probably, I don't know. Like you just gotta think. Like it goes to the Chattahoochee. Like it's a lot of fucking water coming from somewhere. But they probably just like redirected yeah. it. It know? uh, yeah. When they they had to, cause you know it's a dam up there. So that's what they dam. probably did. They probably blocked all that off. That's where it started. Did all the demolition and then let it rip. Cause I mean, I've heard a story of there was a town there. Mm-hmm. They issued a decree to tell the people to leave the town. There are people what? like we're not leaving. 
But, and I said, okay. What, who, what psychopath stood up in a meeting and like had a PowerPoint and was like, uh, I can tell you his name. And was like, hey. Sit, what, was it Sidney Lanier? Was it? Oh. Nah. Oh, God. <laughs> well, that's, that's who the lake is named after, which was a racist, by the way. I, if you know who Sidney Lanier is. Hello. But like, how do you stand up in the middle of one of these meetings and you're just like, you know what? Fuck this town. And like, y'all got 10 days or we're flooding it with the power of the Chattahoochee River. Like, who? Ha- Sydney, some white dude name, middle name. Lanier was an American musician, poet, and author. He served in the Confederate States Army as a private. That alone, shit. Black people stay your ass out of Confederate Lake. That's what the fuck. <laughs> that's what, Don't that's go in that water, y'all. Do not be right. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Now that's why you know it's only black people that died yeah, in that lake. He, I don't his, know no white people that's drowned. In his lake PowerPoint was probably a little fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, but basically, yeah. Think about the people who couldn't afford to leave. What do you think they did with them? They just say, oh, okay, you good, well, we'll just reserve your part and won't pour no water over here. Mm-mm. They probably went in there and shot them folks and got them, did their thing, man. Wow. Because that's what white folks do. <laughs> when they want to take over some shit. <laughs> I always want to know pew, pew. what the title this is ours. will be. And it is, what will white folks do? <laughs> Thank you. That's, 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 the title that's what they do. Thing. That's what they do. Yeah. I mean, is there anything that you want to say about that? Like, like, cause, cause I, can, I, I mean, I can't argue with the history of the world. <laughs> I mean, what? <laughs> that's kind of been the mo, you know. And then you got people apologizing for it, but when you actually look at the history, uh, what the fuck am I supposed to say? What can you say? I, I feel it, man. I mean, I, you know, people, when you exercise empathy and you look at it from the other side, you go, wow. That's a lot of destruction. It's almost like we're a virus. I mean, also uh, you're from you're from the South, right? Yeah, I grew up in the South. You wanna, yeah, in a trailer in, in the a South. Trailer. In a trailer in the South. Yeah. So if you and I probably had not met before, and I were just to make an assumption about you, what would you think that, that assumption might be? Uh, why is a short guy so angry? Mm. <laughs> Where does that anger come from? Uh. I don't know, because uh, I don't really feel angry. It's just kind of like, you know, when you're very empathetic, it's hard to walk around and not be angry when you see so much chaos and death and destruction on your fellow man. So it's, you know, it's when someone's like talking about lattes and then you're looking on your phone and you see what you see, it's kind of hard to give a shit about your latte or anything that you have to say because you don't give a fuck. Damn. Even with this Lake Lanier thing, I think there there's an attempted justification mm-hmm. for everything. But at the end of the day, like right is right and wrong is wrong. And I I think for one, you gotta look for better alternatives. You know, like if you if you if you want to go through life, and it probably even if you just have a, a a flawed view about other people that live on this earth, you don't have to be so assholeish about it you know like let your yeah. moment just be like if a kid is about to fall you just let that kid fall or some shit you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. but like don't like push the kid into the street type shit you know what I'm saying if you're gonna be an asshole just like don't harm nobody in the way of your asshole you know what I'm saying like and w- to go back to that too I'm not saying that anybody should f- feel the same way that I do I'm just saying that the what the way I am is the the empathy that I feel and the way that my heart is, is it's hard for me to function, especially with the friends that I have and the things that I see. So I'm not saying people should feel the way I feel. It's just it's 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 hard when you get in these kind of you get in a con like you just get done talking to a friend who you just watch six videos of like police brutality. And then you go to this other side of town and people are like, God, I just really want to go to Applebee's. And it's like, I don't give a fuck about you or anything you have to say. Mm. So, because I feel all that negative. And it's like, yeah, I mean, the Applebee's would be cool, but there's all this going on and there's a virus and all this stuff. So it's like, I feel you too, but I just can't really care about your problems as much. Uh, I guess that's the only way I can answer that, to, to touch back on that. No, that's that's that's, <clears throat> that's response. I mean... Plug, let me ask you this. When 
did you realize like it's some other shit going on? And it could be as 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 early as you may want it to begin, because I just I'm it's a survey question. Uh when I noticed that we had homeless veterans. Mm. That's when I outside of like all of the fucked up stories that I've heard from family growing up about Jim Crow and all that shit. You don't really see it, so it's all someone else's experience, no matter how bad it is. So you be like, Oh, okay, damn, that was bad. But then when you start to see, Whoa, wait a minute. Um Homeless veterans. Then I started paying attention to like, because I grew up in a church. My mom was a real Jesus freak for a long time. And she ultimately just kind of switched over just being religious, not being as bad once I got older. But I started, there's a lot of that shit didn't make no sense to me. And so I was just like. Well, your grandpa served, right? Yeah, I had grand, I had family members that fight, that fought in wars. And they always told me like, they tell, they tell me about wars like my married friends tell me about marriage. Like, don't do this shit. <laughs> Like, stay away, no matter what you do, go to college, go goddamn rob people, something, but do not <laughs> sign up for this shit. And basically, like, yeah, that was, if the country won't take care of the people that fought for the freedoms that we enjoy, they don't give a fuck, like, for real, for real. And it's so funny when you see these people talk about support the troops, support the troops, support the troops. And it's like, yeah, I mean, y'all can have flyovers at football games, and y'all can stand for the flag, and y'all can do that. But you know what? What do y'all do for these homeless veterans when the government is, you know, the dude in charge of it is 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 buying yachts and is ha- and is trying to privatize the veterans of you know Department of Affairs of veterans and and they don't care about the people that came home. Like I got my dude Adrian, uh, he he lost his business. And is homeless now, and he's a Marine, and the VA won't answer the phone. Mm. Yeah. And that, I'm not, my brother's in the military. I'm not in the military. I used to want to be, but the recruiter laughed at me uh, when I went up to him. Um, so it's like, y'all can sit there on, and say that you support the troops, but do you really? What do you do to support the troops other than say that you do? Nothing. This is action. It's action. The government, the United States people love the United States don't give a fuck everyone lives in this in this it's not me it doesn't affect me don't nobody think HIV and AIDS exists until they get that shit until, you know what I mean everybody exactly. lives like this shit won't happen to them and so if you take that and move it up to the grand scale or to where the people in power feel in the same way that's when they really get fucked up you know yeah, what I mean yeah, if you think about it like the people that can really make a change they don't give a shit neither. As long as it don't affect they rent, they yacht payments, their mortgages, their, their private homes they own, they... I ain't gonna... That's, as long as them sex tapes don't come out. Say, nah! As long as them uh, child sex <laughs> ring tapes don't emerge and shit, they don't be studying that shit, bro. How do you get their attention? Like, 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 what is... How far can you go? Because, you know, there are ways that you can at least, like, reach these people. There's ways that you're told that you can reach them. Gotta hit that pocket. Gotta hit Period. the pocket. Only time violence and making people mm. lose money is the only things that draw attention. Mm. That's it. Period. Mm. Period. You can protest. You can motherfucking plead your case. You can, pe- you can until- pay me. You can beat my ass. Oh, but until <laughs> you start punching some motherfucker or taking their money, they, they, you don't have their full attention. Think about it. That's what gets everybody full attention. If a nigga owes you right now, if somebody called you right now and owes you $10,000, like, hey, man, come meet me and grab that money. Fuck this podcast. You like, hey, bro. <laughs> Catch y'all in the bar, bro. We're going to have to redo this shit. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Right. Same way somebody called you, nigga, hey, I'm pulling up with a chopper. Hey, and y'all know. <laughs> yes. That's the only thing that gets people moving. Yeah. And so if you want to get some action, hit them pockets. Hit them pockets. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, hey, wait. Hold up. Come back. Let's retalk. Exactly. I do think there's an element of hearts and minds, though. I do think, especially with social media, that as messed up as it, the conversations get, what I've noticed is, like, when you say something and then someone that disagrees with you uh, on something pretty polarizing, it usually takes just three messages and then they stop. Mm-hmm. Because the, the, the logic loop that they're caught up in, it, it they they can't... It's accountability. Yeah, they can't. They've been now checked, and they're and uh, you've entrapped them in this circle of hypocrisy 
and then they can't say anything, so it either just turns into, oh, you're just a whatever. <laughs> uh, and, and it's like, you know, it, motherfuckers like to put people in boxes so that they can comp because they live in boxes. Exactly. And it's like, oh, you must be a Democrat. And it's like, how dare you define me and my soul when I'm not a fox or a wolf? I don't like either one of them. So you can't even frame this conversation appropriately because you live under this guise of this two party, this left right paradigm that you're yourself trapped is trapped in, which is the system itself. So you're putting that on me and we can't even have a conversation because you choose to live in a box and you're trying to put me in one. And when you try to talk to certain people, there are some where I have seen people go, you know what, man, I never thought about it that way. And then we go to private message and it's like, damn, dude, I, I didn't know that. And it's like, yeah, man, like, why do you think I'm telling you? Wake the fuck up, bro. Like, it, it. how much more do you need to see? How much more do you need to feel? Because I feel like, <clears throat> yes, I could bring it to your attention. But then, like, now that I have your attention, like, I mean, I don't know. Like, some people you kind of let go as the process goes because. You have to or you'll, you'll go insane. You you can't you can't please people. Yeah. You know, there, there's, to me, like, I think there's a, a bit of accountability that we got to keep, like, for ourselves, like we're we're individualistic as as a nation, mm-hmm. because it's designed that way. You know, just like think about it, like when kids they 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 finish high school and they become mm-hmm. adults. I do actually need that. There you go. You can, you can toss say, it. Yes, toss it. Perfect. Oh, almost. Perfect. There's a little bit of sound, but it'll be all right. They'll be all right. It'll wake them up. Yeah. So, um, I mean, it's 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 a little bit of like you're boxed from the moment that you get here. Because this is nothing more than a large organization. And so unless you have the ability to free yourself and sustain yourself from this organization, like, you know, you, you just kind of got like put... you didn't even ask to be here. And then everybody's telling you all this shit that you're supposed to be. <laughs> and it's like, I didn't even, I didn't ask for this. Why can't, what, what is happening? We just got to learn how to agree to disagree in this country, and that's the problem. Mm. It's like, if you gay, be gay. If you black, be black. If you, And it don't mean, it's like right now, everybody say, uh, if you support Donald Trump, you're a racist. Not necessarily. I know some people that supported Trump, that voted for him, and they not racist. I know some black people that voted for Trump. I know some black people the that problem voted is, for Trump. The problem is, that's who all the racists support. So he is automatically gone. You know what I mean? Well, to to because I don't. Th- that's just tough for me because I someone dropped that on on me the other day. It's like all Trump supporters are neo Nazis, and it's uh, like I don't buy that. and it's like man, that's hard for me to ride with you on that. But if you look at the legislation, if you look at the way things go, and you look at someone's rhetoric, and they continue to do things that are some people would label fascism and you continue to support that even though there is countless things no matter what you believe that support that he may in fact support these type of things if you're following the leader does that make you culpable and responsible for riding with him but when you say following the leader what do you mean like for example most black people after we vote that's a wrap like we did that for you and okay cool What's next? What you about to do for these next four years? So, when you say support him, like, if I if I bought a Ruger, I got a Ruger AR, right? And let's say a Ruger came out with a, a statement that said, fuck black people. What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to melt my AR, or am I just supposed to not buy anything else from Ruger? I mean, that's that's a good point. Um, I, it's like, you know, with Chick-fil-A and everything now, it's, it's really hard to not go get that chicken sandwich. <laughs> Uh, it's really hard. I mean, I hadn't had Taco Bell in a month, and I feel it. Uh, so I don't. I don't. I mean, that, it's one of those things that people. It's like uh, everybody kind of. Everybody's been living in this I'm, have of of not f- fighting for their beliefs and just kind of saying what they feel as opposed to actually believing in something. And I think that we're kind of at the point where everybody's got to be a little bit more Fox Mulder and Scully and say, I don't give a fuck about the charts. I don't care about the documents. I believe in this, no matter what it is. Yeah. And, and, you, and you're open to change and you're open to growth and you're open to new information because this lack of 
conviction has kept everybody as like this goo that just questions everything as opposed to actually standing for something. If I had to think about it, it's like being in a giant like bowl of jello with fruit pieces. Because <laughs> you got some solid pieces in there, but everybody else is like kind of holding up shape, you know. Because we fit in this bowl, you know. And as long as the conditions are right, like it'll work. But the moment it gets hot as hell outside, it all melts and like just those fruit pieces, they remain. And like as a black person, I'm not I'm not afraid to say I'm American. You know what I'm saying? Like I've heard of people say like we are the greatest nation. I don't know to what extent that you consider a great nation. Right. There's some things that I don't agree with, but I'm here and I think I'm an okay person. I ain't got no <laughs> bullshit for you. But the the other part of that is like if you look at at, at, least, at least what's told about certain people in different places, that does affect encounters. You know, I feel like sometimes America as a whole it chokes itself because instead of seeing what you have and not trying to possess it, but to allow it to continue to to do more, you're going to reap those benefits. I think there's a lot of fear, um, and and even with this, like, it's not just Donald Trump. Like, like I I don't want to be the person that's like, yeah, like Donald Trump, like he's an easy target. You know, he's been an easy target way before he's been the president. You've been on shows, you've had your own reality, whatever. You've had situations before. You've had money before. You're not new. You've gone bankrupt. I'm sorry. There's a lot of people who's gone bankrupt, but he's gone bankrupt at least three times. Like now you have a legendary status. Like I, I can salute you <laughs> to a degree, but you're, you the, the way that you, you go about things. I don't want you running my shit, you know. Uh, but I don't want Joe Biden running my shit either because he's the same person that wants to get me locked up. I feel like, you know, the races that are out there, the people that don't have the same human <laughs> decency as others. It doesn't matter if you're from the South. It doesn't matter if you're from the North. There's people fucked up everywhere. And we just need a total social accountability type thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you like you need to tell yourself, shut the fuck up sometimes. Like, out loud. Mm-hmm. You know? Maybe not in front of people, but if you, if, you, <laughs> if you have the privilege of being in your car and just say, man, shut the fuck up, bro. Like, and and just, just go on. I promise you. Your day will go on better. Your week will go on better because you're not giving people no bullshit. You know what I'm saying? I like how you said it. We have to learn how just just to agree to disagree. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and I can I can be cool with somebody if I know that this is what you that, that you're into this. But come to me the wrong way, it's gonna be problems. That's the part that doesn't sit well. It's like the purpose, intentional planning and scheming to do to do wrong. For just one game, you're gonna you, like universally. That doesn't sound like it's gonna work out for you in the end. So like, kind of keep that in the back of your mind. It's like there's a push and pull somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I think that he's kind of become a, a mirror, uh, where to me, and this is just my opinion. Uh, and this is probably my imagination too, is he's like the physical manifestation of the capitalistic machine. Mm. Just, I mean, from just, and I'm not, and I'm not saying this as a judgment on him, but I'm just saying if if because he's a fascinating man to watch. There's I don't there's he's no one's ever existed like that man. Um, <clears throat> as far as his mannerisms, as far as his rhetoric, as far as the way he looks or whatever, I'm just saying from a pure thought experiment. Um, he embodies that for me because of the way he's done his business dealings, the way that he talks, the, 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 what he represents. And he has led for almost four years now. And right here at the end of it, we are being asked because there's another election coming. What are we going to be? And here is the mirror image of what this hyper capitalistic ideal looks like. And then this is how we've responded because of all the things that manifest from this hyper-capitalization of this country. With, from the loss of social programs, from the loss of education, <clears throat> from all the things that come from syst- systematic racism in this country. They're just a manifestation of this hyper-capitalistic ideal uh, because we, we've had the progressive era. We've gone away from that. We've tried things at certain times. Um, there's not a lot of safety nets here. Like you go to a country like Denmark, 
<clears throat> that is ultimately it's it's capitalistic, but the safety net's much bigger. Uh, they have their issues too. Uh, you know, everybody goes to Scandinavia and it's like, look at this, it's this whatever. But they have issues, but it's a lot better than what we're seeing here now, man. Like, can't we just do better? Like, why do y'all not want people to have health care? Like, why not? If we print the money, what, what? I mean, obviously, it's owned by a private bank now because we've been sold out. But all those ideals come from, to me, to that premise. So we're being asked, well, who are we going to be? You get to choose who you want to be. You so, know? like, if you, if you came, if you weren't born here, <clears throat> and I don't know because I didn't come, like, you, you have something to compare where you were living before to your life here. You know, and sometimes, like, I'm not going to say that makes it better. I'm not going to say it makes it worse. But you just have something to judge off of. You're just born here. You're kind of, like, lost. Like, going through the fucking 90s as a kid, and you just see... You, <laughs> it's a blur, it's, man. Bro, like... like <laughs> If, there was Ninja Turtles. Uh, <laughs> there was there there was Batman. There was all this stuff happening. There was uh, game shows. Game. There shows. was what I mean. You had would you have Twister? What Last Boy Scout? I mean, the nineties were were a haze, right? The nineties was Twister game. It was terrible. <laughs> it was terrible. Oh, I was talking about the movie with Bill Paxton. Oh, where he no. fucking throws the liquor yeah. into the F five. <laughs> That was the funniest movie. I got man, some, I love I got that, some movie, head that movie. I got some movie. I'll never forget that movie. I'll never what, do you forget. remember the scene? Nah. <laughs> nah There's a lot of shit it. that's going on in the 90s. Oh, it's like, man, it say was... like the opening credits to like the first storm. <laughs> <laughs> man, the 90s were so great and it put us in such a haze. And I know that there's a lot of negative things that happened, but I'm just saying our, our, we were really blessed to live in that decade of that type of culture. Obviously, it's led to other stuff and, but i'm just saying there was good shit that happened in the 90s mm. and we're hard on the 90s but man some of the movies man, batman crushed it in the 90s val kilmer man fuck y'all that hate on val kilmer <laughs> like that batman like that was a good I, batman all man the, all the batman <laughs> i have like a soft movie. spot for val kilmer he said val kilmer batman man <laughs> listen i love michael keaton <laughs> That's the Batman I know. Man, Michael Keaton. Is... My, Jack Nicholson was my favorite. Oh, man, yeah. They've been good. But, no, man, I mean, Val Kilmer owned the 90s. Doc Holliday? Tombstone? Oh, nah. you ain't seen Tombstone? Nah. I'm not, oh. I'm not a movie buff like I should be. Oh, man. Yeah, you got it. You will have a new respect for Val Kilmer <laughs> when you watch Tombstone. You, you right? Yeah. Man. The li- Dude, the dialogue in that movie. Whew. Yeah, you got to see Tombstone. Okay. I'm, I got it at home. I have to give it to you. Like, my mom put me on the movies, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, shout out to women, man. Shout out to wet black women, but shout out to women as a whole. Cause, but really, black women. Fuck that. Um, because um, my mom, she used to put me on movies. My sister put me on music. And, like, you know, just, like, right now, them going through the 90s. I'm a kid. I don't know what none of this shit means. They know what all this shit means to a degree. You know, they're older. My mom, of course. But, like, my sister, she's older than me. And, um, you know, you can kind of, like, put everything together. Put away I understand this shit. And then now I have a chance to grow. And, like, we take on something different. Like, you know, like you ever watch these kids now? And how they just, I, like, they just digest shit so quickly they're geniuses they are fucking they are geniuses man dude they rented out the president's uh rally bro yeah. kids did that yeah but you gotta look at the technology they got we would have done the same shit if nah we, i don't know man we have, bro. Like, dude just, and not because i would have been watching ninja turtles not necessarily yeah not necessarily. no no nah. you gotta look at because the, they ain't kids. got no shows what shows they got the kid this it's, it's like trying to compare us to these kids is like the NBA in the eighties with yeah, well, the little shorts <laughs> to the long to the long short of NBA but now. Why do we, where the game is fast, where it's, you know what I mean. You just can't do but it. But why bro. do we always try to compare okay. shit? Like, what does it even matter who's better or what? Like, why do we always go to that? Well, because we're humans, and that's what we like. To like, do. what they did was brilliant, Absolutely. and I'm just saying, for me, I wouldn't have done it because I would have been fucking with Ninja Turtles and Batman. Cause they ain't what should they ain't got no shows. I so now they're Power on their Rangers. phones. Now they're on YouTube. 
I, I agree. I 100% agree with that. We weren't allowed to talk about it. Yeah, because then they taught us bullshit. They did again. Look at the research that they can do. We couldn't do that if we had motherfucking uh, Encyclopedia Britannica. Whatever was in that motherfucker went. Man, you got graded on that bitch. Hey, like you got graded on that, if you could use if, it. If the Encyclopedia Britannica said Mike Irvin Magic Johnson owned the goddamn Waterburger in Dallas, Texas, that's what the fuck it was. Uh, so that's <laughs> part of it. We didn't have. We didn't have that shit. We had a teacher tell us. I really believe the Trail of Tears. Was some white people showing up, asking some Indian people, "Hey, we like some land over here. We like this land. We gonna give y'all a little money, and we found a place for y'all. We gonna help y'all move." That's how that shit was sold to us in public school in the eighties, uh-huh. in the early nineties. Uh-huh. I didn't have no internet to go home. Like, okay, I hear you. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Like I guess, bro, I they dressed us no- up. They dressed us up. Listen to me. They <laughs> dressed us up. As Native American, I wore war paint <laughs> as a fucking white kid. And they ask, who wants to be a pilgrim? Oh, who wants to be man. the, like, and I never wanted to be the pilgrim. Because wh- who wants to be the pilgrim? <laughs> hey, you figured the shit pushed in. So, bro, like, they dressed us up. And you, we would fucking, I remember doing a war chant, motherfucker. What are you talking about? They, they stole history. Yeah. They were fucking slaughtered, bro. And you're gonna dress me up? And what not near one of them here to defend this whole fuckery? Are you kidding me, man? At every single first grade elementary play, we need a native representative of each one just to ensure that man. the historical facts 